let's look at mail retrieval using standard protocols such as POP3 and IMAP. So we'll label this section mail retrieval using POP3 as well as IMAP. There are many programs that provide this functionality for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but the program that comes with Red Hat Enterprise Linux that's commonly used and is fully featured and easy to configure is named Dovecot. So features mail retrieval using standard protocols. And common package is Dovecot. So Dovecot implements a POP3 and IMAP server that you can then configure your clients to connect to. And Dovecot supports both MBOX as well as MailDir formatted messages. So supports both MBOX, which means var spool mail, followed by username. And in that single file are all the messages. And MailDir formats. So regardless of the type that you have in place, Dovecot supports them both and provides access via standard TCP ports for POP3 as well as for IMAP. In addition, Dovecot supports SSL, meaning POP3 secure and IMAP secure. If you're concerned about the transfer of information between the client and the server, with that said, let's install. So our first task is to install Dovecot. Again, there are other IMAP and POP3 related programs such as University of Washington's IMAPD as well as QPopper. But again, Dovecot's the commonly used or de facto standard, at least in my experience, and is in included with the Red Hat Enterprise 5 build. So here's the package. Of course, we'll use yum to install it on our remote system, Linux like CBT04. And this will get the process going unless it's installed already. Checking repository. And there we see the installation of Dovecot. Now let's RPM query list the package to see what's included. And we'll scroll up towards the top. It isn't a big package. It includes a primary config file, etc dovecot.conf. And this is the primary config file. Now let's navigate back to the dump. There's a PAM entry for authentication since Dovecot handles authentication, meaning connectivity from a client with a certain set of credentials, username and password. There's an OpenSSL configuration file located beneath etc PKI. And that's Dovecot. This is for SSL config. There's a start file in the init D directory. The binary is located in user live Dovecot. These are various plugins, various modules that are used by Dovecot. And, and these are the libraries as opposed to the binary. The primary binary is located in user sbin Dovecot. And there are helper binaries such as user live exec dovecot imap, similar to postfix, placing its items beneath user live exec. Dovecot places its items beneath user live exec dovecot imap, and or dovecot, including entries for imap, imap login, pop3, pop3 login, and then there's documentation. So to be sure that the program will start when the system is rebooted. Let's get the name of the process from, or the service from the inet directory, the inet D directory. We'll execute check config 35 dovecot on. And then we'll execute service dovecot start. And we'll follow that up with netstat ntl. Notice it reads starting dovecot imap. If we grep 110, which is the POP3 protocol, port, we see that Dovecot's listening to IPv6 and 4. 143 is the IMAP port, and we see again that Dovecot's listening to the appropriate port, port 143. If we apply the P option to the POP3 port, we see that it's listening. 
so great, our system is up and running. We could actually connect to it from the remote window system or from a remote mail user agent such as Outlook Express or Evolution. But before doing so, let's take a look at that dovecot config file. We'll less the contents of it. And we'll see some defaults, such as the base directory, the protocols to en enable, IMAP POP3, POP3S, and IMAPS. This item is commented, which IP addresses to listen to, the board to log information, the timestamp to place into the logs, whether or not SSL should be disabled, the default is set to no, and quite a few other settings to control connectivity. If we next that NTLP grep dov, we'll see reports that are currently being served and we see both IMAP as well as POP3S security ports. So the default configuration, and this wasn't always the case with Dovecot, but default configuration binds to POP3, POP3 secure, IMAP, and IMAP secure. Now just a quick word about POP3 and IMAP. POP3 supports downloading of messages from a server with the optional ability to leave the, the messages on the server, but the POP3 protocol is used primarily to download messages to the client. The secure version of the protocol simply encrypts the transmission stream. The IMAP protocol leaves the messages on the server. So leaves messages on server, downloads messages to client. That's a major difference between the two protocols, and you'll need to determine what suits your environment in order to move forward. But the default configuration provides access via both methods, via both protocols, POP3 as well as IMAP in both clear text and secure versions. Both IMAP and POP3 protocols operate in clear text, which means a middleman who is someone who has access to the communications stream between the client and the server will be able to sniff credentials used to access email, which is why you should always consider using POP3 secure or IMAP secure wherever possible. So a second task would be to configure mail client to download messages using perhaps POP3 for a given user, root, Linux CBT, what have you. Now the flow of things will be as follows. You will send a message, let's say, or we will send a message using MUT. MUT consults send mail. Send mail places into the postfix queue. Postfix delivers the message to remote system and then will retrieve a message using perhaps POP3 or IMAP. This is the general flow. Locally on the Linux CBT serve one box, we generate a message, press Y to send, send mail is invoked, the message is placed into the postfix queue, postfix then delivers the message to the remote system using the assistance of DNS, and once a message has been delivered to the remote system, we will download the message using POP3 or IMAP, or POP3 secure, or IMAP secure, either or, but that's the standard flow from one client or one user to another user. So we will connect using our desktop to our Windows box located at 176. Let's history grep from our local system, that is, our desk, Let's see if it's in our memory. And we want to connect using history item number num number 20, 921, that is, using exclamation 921. This will pop up a full screen of the Windows XP box giving us the ability to log in as a user who has the rights to authenticate to the system, such as administrator. And now we have a desktop. If we navigate to start, all programs, we should be able to set up our Outlook Express environment if Outlook Express is installed. And it usually is. Here it is. So we'll click on it and instruct Outlook Express to download messages from our POP3 server. Now this Outlook Express is configured with old settings but we cleaned it out, so that's why it's prompting us, and we'll indicate our name to be the following. Root at Linux CBT serve 4 and the suffix. We'll click on next, indicate 
the IP address. Again, this is the name of the profile. The display name will take it and just include it as our email address. And the incoming POP server will be referenced as follows. 199. The outgoing SMTP server will be the same server. Postfix allows users on the same local area network to send messages using its SMTP interface without having to authenticate. In other words, it trusts users connected to the local host, meaning the Postfix host, or on the local subnet. But it does not trust users on other systems. Now, the mail server is a POP3 server, but we could optionally specify IMAP or HTTP when configuring Outlook Express. We need to indicate a password for root for connecting to the server and then attempt to download the messages for the user. We won't import any Outlook settings. We'll just move forward. We had Outlook available from one of our previous demonstrations of OpenPGP when we integrated the software with Outlook. So now we get the default message and if we click on Control D to delete the message, it's gone to the delete items folder and we'll click on send and receive to try and download a message from 199. This launches the connection and from a shell we can determine and notice this says it presents an authentication certificate. This means Outlook Express is attempting to connect to the server using TLS. Now let's just confirm our password once more. We'll allow it. We'll always allow it for the site. And it doesn't like the password. Let's try it again. Send and receive. And let's try as a user of XCBT. Perhaps we just don't have the right password. <laughs> 